What's up guys, welcome back to Unreal Dev Hub. In today's video, you will learn how to use data tables to set the values of spawned actors using Blueprint. Let's jump in. So before we get started, I'll show you what we're working towards in this video. We will create a Blueprint that uses the values set by the user in a data table, like this one, to set values on spawned actors in our environment. So now let's create some assets so we can make that happen. All right, in our content drawer, we will create a series of classes that we'll use to make this happen. I'll right click, create a new blueprint class I will, of type actor. I will call this BP underscore spawned actor mesh. We'll right click again. I'll create a new blueprint class of type actor. We'll call this BP underscore spawner from data table. Um, I will right click and I'll create a material. I'll call this M underscore data table color. I'll right click one more time and I'll create a blueprint structure. I'll call this ST underscore table value types. And then I will right click and I will under blueprint actually. Uh, I will right click and I will just search at the top, or actually under miscellaneous, it's gonna be data table. Then it's gonna ask me for a row structure. So I will type the structure we just created, which is st underscore table value types. And I will call this dt underscore data values. All right, so the relationship between these will be as follows. The spawner will have a box in it, as we saw out here. And in that box, we're going to spawn these actors that we've called spawned actor mesh. We're going to set the mesh, the scale, and the material. The data table will have the values of which we want to set, which is like this. So things like colors and scale and mesh type. The material is what we'll use to create a dynamic material instance. And then the structure is the layout of values that we have in our data table. So now let's jump into doing some logic inside of these. All right, we'll start by setting our structure type. So I'm going to double click and I'll put this full screen. Starts off by giving us just a Boolean value. So what the structure is, it's going to be the set of values that we can use to um, create values in our data table. So we'll learn what that means in just a minute, but let's make it happen. I'll start off and we'll call this first row type name. I'm going to make this a, a name. I'm going to add a variable and I'll just add a few. The second row will be color. We're going to go over here and we're going to search linear color. It's going to be this one right here. So we'll select that. The third will be called scale multiplier. I'm going to make this an integer instead of a vector. So we'll just multiply by a vector later. And then this is going to be called mesh type. I'll go over here where it says name and I'm going to type static mesh. And it's going to be this one right here that just says static mesh and we'll use an object reference. I'll save that. If you want to continue to learn game development in Unreal Engine 5 using Blueprint, follow along for more Unreal Engine 5 tutorials. Back to the video. Now, let's do a little bit of work on our material. We'll double click into this, open it up, and I'm going to use a constant 3. I will drag this top pin into base color. I will right click, type convert, uh, convert to parameter and I will call this color. I'm gonna set the default value to red. And I will save this. We're gonna go next to our spawned actor mesh. We're just doing all the groundwork now. Going to add a component of type static mesh. And I will just make this a cube, just by default. 
And now we are going to add some values in, into our data table. So I'm going to open up my DT underscore data values. And we'll see that it has the values that we set in our struct as the row names here. So from our struct, we had a type name, color, scale, multiplier, and mesh type. In our data table right here, we can see these now as rows. So in the top, we're going to click add. And there is a row name, but we're also just going to have a type name. This will allow us to say, um, you know, pass this through if we wanted to name an object or print something. But uh, so we're going to rename this row. We'll call this large green cylinder. And the type name is just going to be, let's call this cylinder. The color we're going to set as green. So we're going to click this here. And then the scale multiplier, let's say it's two. And then the mesh type, we're going to, we can just search here for cylinder. And we'll click this one. This one, if we browse to it, is in the engine meshes folder. So we'll get the rest from this folder as well. Let's add some more values to our table. I'm going to add one, two. And we're going to call this, um, this row will be lar, uh, medium red cube. We'll make it type name cube. We'll make it red. We'll make the scale multiplier three. And we're going to go back to this folder that we liked before. I'm going to make this a cube. So I'll set that. And then we'll make one more row that is small uh, blue cone. And I'll just, uh, we'll just leave that as the type name. But I'm also going to rename this. We'll paste that there. And we're going to make this blue. We're going to make the scale multiplier flyer one. We'll go back here and it's like we don't have a cone, but I'll just use this mat preview mesh. I could also just search for a cone here. Yeah, we'll just use the cone. So I'll hit save. And now we have some values in our data table. All right. Now that we've dealt with all of our blueprint classes, so we've dealt with our spawn mesh, our data table, our material, and our structure. Now let's add all the logic to use this data that we've set here in our data table into a spawned actor. All right, so I'll double click and open this up. I'll go to my event graph. And what we're going to need first is a box component. So in our top left, in our components panel, I will type uh, box collision. Uh, this doesn't really need to have a collision in this situation. We're going to use it as the extents. So I'm going to type 1000 by 1000 here. If we go to our viewport, we see we've created a box volume. So I'm going to drag this out into the center of our level. And now we can see that there is a box there. So let's go back to our event graph and this is where the logic is going to start. I won't need these, so I'm going to delete these. And all we're going to use is event begin play. So what we're going to do is we'll pull off and we'll say event begin play, get data table rows, row names, and we need to have a data table. So I'm going to get my data table up here. I'll browse to it and I'm going to click back here and then I'm going to use my gray arrow. So that's going to pop this in here and we'll have this data table immediately referenced here. We can also promote this to a variable, return, and then now we'll just have it over here. And it's a variable that we can refer to later. I'm going to grab this and I will say promote variable. We'll call this row names. And then the way we're going to do it is we'll randomly select for a set number of times. So we'll say, do we want 100 spawned objects? Do we want 500 spawned objects? So I'm going to drag off and I'll say for loop. I'm going to use this down here under flow control. I'm going to drag off here. I'm going to say subtract. I'm going to type one down here. I'll promote this to a variable and I'll say requested spawn count. And I'm going to drag off now. And this is because it goes from zero. This is uh, 
in theory, we could also do from, eh, we'll do that. Yeah, we'll just leave it as, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, I'll compile and I'll save. So from one to spawn count, um, we're going to pull off this uh, table and we'll say get data table row. I'll use this under, under utilities, drag this in here. I'm going to grab my row names, pull it off here and say random array item. I'll hit return. I'm going to drag this right into here. Compile, save. And what we want to do now is we want to make sure that we know what type of table this is. So I'm going to pull off here and we're going to say break. And we're going to use the structure we created before. So it's throwing an error because it wants to know what the out row type is. So this is the structure we created. So remember we created our ST underscore table value types. So we're going to type break and then our structure name. We compile. Now it's not going to throw an error. So we'll do a series of simple operations and we'll start by dragging off row found. So when the row is successfully found in this array, we're going to do something. If not, we're not going to do anything. I'm going to type spawn actor from class. And I'm going to use our spawned actor mesh type. So I'll browse to this. I'm going to click back into our blueprint. And I'm just going to use the left gray arrow to pop that class in there. You can always search. Sometimes I just like to use the arrow to make it easy. Now, what we want to do is we want to get a location from inside of our box. And so to do that, what we'll do is we'll grab our box. We'll drag it onto our graph. We will pull off of this and we'll say get world location. And I will also say get scaled box extent. I'm going to pull off of here and say random point in bounding box. And I will drag this into the half size. I'm going to drag this into spawn transform. And then I'm going to select all of this. And I will right click and I will say collapse to function. This is going to say, I will call this uh, get new spawn transform. And then we're going to click pure right here so that this is still a function that's going to execute this logic we just created, but it won't need for me to run an execution pin through it. So I'll compile this and I'll save. From here, what we'll do is we'll pull off here and we'll say get component by class. And we're going to use a static mesh component. We will pull off of here and we'll say is valid. And we're going to use this one with the question mark. If it is valid, then we're going to continue by grabbing this return value from the static mesh and we'll say set static mesh and use the stop one. And then we have this value here from mesh type. We're going to drag that down here. What we'll actually do is we'll, we'll bring this over here. I'm going to clean this up a little bit so that it's nice and tidy. And next, what we're going to do is we will say um, from this static mesh component, we'll say create dynamic material instance. And we're going to pull off of, we're going to grab the material we created. So this one here, M data table caller, we'll browse to it. And then we're going to set that right here with our gray arrow. And then we'll pull off of this and we'll say set vector parameter value. And as we recall, we called it color. So we can just look back here. If we need to our material. This is named color. So we're going to set this color parameter. We're going to drag this linear color into here. Next, we will say for this component, set world scale 3D. And then we'll pull off of our vector 
and say multiply. We'll just do one, one, one multiplied by this. This is just going to convert. It's going to be one times whatever our scale multiplier is, this integer. This could also be a float if we wanted, but. And then we'll just say at the end, print string. We'll pull off here and say append. We're going to drag our type name in here and we'll print um, actor spawned from row named colon space. That'll look like that. And then we'll print this at the end for five seconds. So I'll compile and I'll save. So before we test this, let's just change one thing. We'll take our requested spawn count. We'll make sure that it is exposed by pressing that eyeball. And then we're going to set a default value. So it'll probably be zero for you. But let's set it something like uh, 50. We'll compile and I'll save. When we go here, we'll see that now this is exposed to the outside of the blueprint that we have in our environment. I'm actually going to, in my data table, use a different mesh for my cube. I realize this is a five meter cube. So I'll use um, cube. Let's find one that's uh, normal. So that one's great. So I'll use this. These basic shapes also work. So I'm going to set that here. Save. And I'm going to simulate my environment. You can see now that when I simulate or play, it's going to spawn these randomly. I'm just going to do that a few times and you can do that as well. And if you were to change this to, let's say, uh, 250, and then let's make our box larger too. I'm just going to scale this. Like that. And when I simulate, I'll see that now I have 250 objects. So, you know, you can scale this up, make sure not to crash your Unreal by doing something crazy, but Let's say 2,500. I haven't actually tried this yet. So I'll simulate and it's going to spawn all these objects. Uh, it actually had a little bit of a hitch there. So, you know, if you're spawning this many objects, you might use something like PCG, but this is uh, a way to use data tables to set the actor types uh, or actor values on many different objects. And for that reason, it is uh, very valuable to know these techniques and hope you learned something in this Blueprint tutorial. Uh, if you haven't yet, please follow Unreal Dev Hub and support the channel, and stay tuned for more Unreal Engine 5 content and tutorials. Thanks all.